Hello, uh, can you hear me, everyone? Am I audible? Yes, sir. All right. So let me share the screen in a second. All right, so the plan basically for today, we'll just uh, do this final question in the worksheet of capacitance. And uh, after we finish this thing, uh, you can ask if you have any doubts from uh, this entire worksheet. Uh, hopefully you got the time to go through it. And uh, once that's done, uh, I'll quickly share a, a simple quiz with you. It's a very easy quiz and uh, uh, I'll do it over WhatsApp, right? And so you can uh, attempt that and submit it the way you usually do. All right, so before uh, before I start, is there any uh, questions from uh, the previous um, problems that we have attempted uh, from capacity? No questions? All right, so uh, let me just fix this. <clears throat> All right, so uh, here, uh, this was the final question that was left uh, last time. Uh, we have an uncharged capacitor and it's connected in series with a battery. As you can see, uh, a switch and a resistor is shown in 6.1, figure 6.1. So this is the switch uh, and we also have a resistor over here. All right, so uh, the battery has EMF 9.0 walls uh, and negligible internal resistance. So there is no internal resistance coming from the battery uh, and the EMF is 9.0 volts. The EMF is, uh, hopefully it's clear, it's basically uh, the work done in moving a charge around the circuit completely, right? And potential difference is the work done to get a charge across one particular component. So for example, it could be a capacitor. So there would be a potential difference across these plates of the capacitor. But when we talk in terms of the entire circuit, that's the battery, right? Because this is the positive terminal and that's the negative terminal of the battery. So the electrons should flow, it depends. So you could take this direction, so they flow from negative to positive, right? Positive region and that's EMF. Uh, just a brief uh, definition for EMF there for you. And the capacitance of the capacitor is 4,700 microfarads, right? So they, they, this is also uh, provided with the capacitance. The switch is closed at time t equals zero. So uh, initially, so we, now we're doing the physics at time t equals zero, right? And uh, during this time interval, T is equal to zero to four seconds, the charge passes through the resistor and that charge is given as 22 millicoulombs, right? So which is just 22 into 10 raised to power minus three coulombs. Now calculate the energy that is transferred in the battery during the time interval zero to four seconds. So in this interval, when the, char the charge that is, uh, moving which is 22 millicoulombs we have to compute what energy is that capable of storing inside the battery so how would we go about this problem any idea how would we uh, compute the uh, energy that is stored in the battery, right? Now it's not, uh, we are not talking about capacitor, but the battery, right? So that's important. Any idea from lecture? Any guesses? All right, so, uh, we know that the energy stored inside a battery is given by the EMF across the battery times the charge 
that is stored in the battery. So the because it is it is again it is the same equation that energy is uh, voltage over charge, or you can write it as the potential difference is the work done times uh, charge, right? Sorry, uh, I'm writing the equation uh, wrong, my, my mistake. Uh, this is energy is equal to charge times the EMF, which is voltage is equal to QE. Right. And so this is the energy, which means uh, the, and the, the, the reason we are using this expression and not the other one, which was a half CV squared is because we don't, the question is asking the energy which is stored in the battery, not in the capacitor. So the capacitor is not in play over here. And so the energy would be 9.0 volts times the charge that is 22 into 10 raised to power minus three coulombs, right? And then you do the math and this gives you uh, about 0 0.20 joules. Right? So the energy that is transferred in the battery is 0 0.20 joules. Is that clear? Do you understand uh, why do we use uh, this particular equation and not the other one uh, for energy of a capacitor? Right, that's clear. All right, okay. So the next part is determine for the capacitor at time t equals four seconds. Now for the capacitor, right? And at what time? At t equals four seconds, right? So that means when it has uh, attained this entire charge of 22 millicoulombs, we have to find the potential difference we across the capacitor, right? So that's pretty straightforward because we know that the uh, the capacitance equation is that it is the charge stored between the plates or having potential difference V. So it's C is equal to Q over V. Q would be that charge which is stored in the in this thing uh, that pass basically the, ch the charge that is passing through the uh, through the entire circuit when it's turned on. So it passes through the resistor, goes through the capacitor. So the charge uh, on the capacitor would be 22 into 10 raised to power minus three coulombs as well. Uh, the potential difference is what we want to compute, right? And the capacitance of the capacitor can be read off as 4,700 microfarads. So you rearrange this expression and this gives you 22 into 10 raised to power minus three coulombs divided by 4,700 into 10 raised to power minus six farads. Right? And then you just do the math and this gives you about 5.1, uh, uh, sorry, uh, it gives you uh, 4.7, 4 4.7 uh, volts, right? So uh, the, the, this second part says that the energy stored in the capacitor, right? Now they're asking for the energy that is stored inside the capacitor before they were asking uh, for a battery, right? So the energy stored inside a capacitor is given as the, it is basically the work, again, it is the work done in moving, uh, in separating the plates uh, of the capacitor because there are charges stored on the plates of the capacitors. So there's positive on one, negative on the other. They're equal and opposite a net charges zero, but the energy comes from the fact that these plates have to be kept separated apart. So there's work being done and that's uh, the energy. So it is just half CB squared, right? And then you can just simply use uh, the capacitance, which is uh, 4,700 into 10 raised to power minus six farads times V squared, which is 4.7, right? As we computed the potential difference across the plates uh, is 4.7 uh, wall. So we'll square this thing. And this gives us an energy uh, of 5.1 into 10 raised to power minus two joules. Right. 
So that's the energy 5.1 into 10 raised to power minus two joules. Now note that this energy is uh, the one that is stored inside the capacitor, which is less than the energy that was transferred sir, to the battery. Can take the chat box? Uh, yeah, sir, in part A shouldn't have be divided by uh, two as well. Uh, which one? A uh, part A, you mean part A I part? The first part where we are computing uh, the energy transfer? Uh, no, we'll not divide it uh, by two. Uh, you're con again, you're confusing it with a uh, capacitor, right? Uh, in capacitor, it was that we had two plates and we had to average out that uh, potential. And that's why we had that divided by two factor in the energy equation. I, that's what you're referring to, right? The one we discussed that we can also, uh, the graph that we draw and the area under that graph is basically a triangle whose area is given by half into base into height, right? Yeah, so in this case, it is uh, instead the battery and the battery uh, obeys the basic uh, equation. There is no other uh, physics going on in uh, for the battery. Uh, and it's just that the energy is uh, the EMF of the battery times the charge that is passing through uh, the battery. Right, so yeah, now uh, uh, coming back to uh, coming back to this thing, uh, this energy, uh, you can clearly see that the energy that was transferred uh, in the battery was 0 0.20 joules as we computed, right? It's greater, it's a larger uh, number of energy and uh, compared to the energy that is stored inside the capacitor. And that's where this next part takes us. It says, why are my answers in this energy and these energy are different? Uh, one hint is coming from the fact that the capacitor stores less energy. So where did that energy go? What could be a, any a possible answer? There could be a multiple uh, possibilities. Yeah, resistor, that's, that's correct. So, so the, uh, the energy uh, is lost basically uh, in the resistor uh, you could also say things like uh, the wires that have been uh, used to connect the circuit. Uh, maybe some of the energy has been lost in those wires uh, and basically any uh, circuit material. So energy is lost into those uh, materials. So energy is lost in resistor. As you said, uh, you could also say uh, or uh, wires, or basically any circuit component, right? Even the battery. All right, so that was the final question. Uh, before we uh, go anywhere from here, uh, is there any uh, questions from anyone uh, regarding capacitance? so far. There's the question that we were doing in a previous class. Can you discuss that again? Uh, the question that we were doing in the previous class. So, uh, so the entire question, all right, uh, Hasi? Okay, so, so this question number four. All right, so I'll, uh, I'll go over this question uh, once again. So uh, we have a capacitor and there are two metal plates and it's separated in such and such way. Uh, there is an insulator in between. And in, on this graph, we are given uh, how, the, uh, how the charge stored varies as the potential difference is increasing, right? So we can see that it is this line that you can see over here and uh, we are asked uh, that explain why capacitor stores energy but no charge. I hope that is uh, that is crystal clear now because uh, again the reason is that the charges that are stored 
uh, that are at least said to say that they're stored on the plates of the capacitor, they're equal and opposite. So in fact, there is no net charge because they would cancel each other out and become zero. And when that happens, uh, so we cannot really talk in terms of charge stored, but the plates are separated apart uh, and something has to be doing work to uh, keep those plates separated apart if they are both positive and negatively charged. And that work that is done because of conservation of energy, it cannot just disappear into nothingness. Uh, it will be stored in the uh, capacitor, right? In on the plates of the capacitor or between these plates of the capacitor, that energy is uh, stored. So that's basically why capacitor stores energy, but no charge. Okay, so use figure 3.2 to determine the capacitance of the capacitor. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We know capacitance is given by uh, the ratio of charge stored between the plates which have potential difference. So it's Q by V. And if we go back on this graph, you can pick any point on this graph one way is that, right? Pick any point and you'll get the, you'd get corresponding value for voltage and the charge, right? The potential difference and the charge. So once you get that, you can just use, put them back into the equation for capacitance and figure that out. The other way is you can just go about and find the gradient or the slope of this line uh, by using, borrowing a tool from mathematics of uh, finding gradients, right? And so that's how you'll get the capacitance. So that was this thing where we found the capacitance this way, which was 1800 microfarads. The next part says that the loss in the uh, energy stored in the capacitor when the potential difference is reduced from 10 to 7.5 volts. So the potential difference is reduced, which means that it would now store less energy. So we want to figure out what is that loss in this energy uh, that it's storing now. And that is again, coming back to a work done in keeping the plate separated apart, which is half CV squared. And so you get the value of capacitance and the final potential is 7.5. Initial potential is 10 volts. So you just put the, these values like this over here and you uh, write your answer as uh, whatever you get by doing the math, which is uh, 39, right? They ask you in millijoules, so that's why we got this uh, 39 and 10 raised to power three, minus three has been written as uh, milli, right? Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, the final part, uh, uh, I guess this was the final part. Uh, the three capacitors, X, Y, and Z, each of capacitance, 10 microfarads are connected as shown. Uh, you can clearly see uh, these capacitors uh, connected in this way. There is a parallel arrangement of two Y and Z capacitors and they're then connected in series with X. So what you do is you just uh, solve the capacitor that are connected in parallel so that you can find what single capacitor will be equivalent to this combination of the parallel capacitance, uh, which is by just adding these capacitors in parallel. And we know that to add capacitors parallelly, it is just the simple uh, algebraic sum uh, of the individual capacitance. So that's uh, 20 microfarads. And then you, uh, then this is the circuit that you have and you can find the total capacitance by simply uh, adding these capacitors in series, which is uh, the inverse addition, right? So uh, they are saying that initially the capacitors are uncharged, uh, but then a potential difference of 12 volts is applied between points A uh, and B. To determine the magnitude of charge on one plate of the capacitor uh, X, right? So this is uh, what we want to find out. And we know uh, this is a final part, right? So uh, charge, we can find the capacitance. The total capacitance is figured out, the combined, which is the combined capacitance. Uh, having that, now the potential difference across uh, the capacitors is what we want to find. It's always on these uh, plates that are parallel uh, or the, the components that are connected parallel to each other, the potential difference is the same as the EMF uh, coming from the battery, right? Which is 12 volts. So it would be 12 volts on both of these 
uh, capacitors. Uh, and then uh, on the uh, on the capacitor X, uh, we can find it. It is uh, it would be eight uh, volts would be stored on capacitor uh, X. Now, having the potential differences, uh, sir, you took the inverse condition of the wrong values. Uh, how so? Uh, can you? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I wrote I wrote wrong over here, uh, but it was uh, so one, uh, and this should be twenty. Yeah. So I I wrote it down uh, incorrect, but uh, this would uh, this is what would so this would be twenty uh, plus ten. Oh, uh, yeah. I think I made a mistake over here, right? Is that you're referring to? Uh, is this the is this uh, the one that you're referring to, Alish? So, no, so it's it's correct, right? I mean, how is it wrong? It should be, uh, oh, uh, it's in parallel, right? So, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, you're right. So for parallel, we just add them together and then we have one uh, capacitor is of 20 and the other one is of uh, 10 microfarads. So yes, you're right. So this should be uh, 20 microfarads over here. And then this would give you, would it give you uh, 30 microfarads? Or uh, six point six, seven. All right, so it would be 6.67 microfarads and uh, that would be the total capacitance uh, of the circuit, right? So uh, let's, uh, let's quickly correct that. So for capacitance, it should be a six, 0.67 microfarads, right? And so, yeah, so so thanks for uh, correcting that one. And and then where was I? Uh, we wanted to figure out the charge on uh, on this plate of capacitor X, right? So we have uh, the we have the capacitance of that capacitor, and we have the potential difference across it. So it is then simply uh, this thing that we can just use Q is equal to C times V, where a capacitance is this thing, uh, V is this thing, and then this would give you some other answer. So if we can just do the math from here and whatever the charge that you get uh, is, uh, would be your answer. Uh, so it's eight into 6.67. So it would be around about 53 microfarads. All right, so yeah, so that's uh, this thing. Uh, now, uh, any other uh, questions? Okay. Okay, so, so that's this worksheet and uh, I'll share this one uh, with you as well. Uh, now I'll share uh, the, the quiz with you uh, on WhatsApp and try doing that. Uh, uh, so I'm not going to type everything back in the chat. Uh, I'll just tell you, uh, you, you can use uh, 25 minutes uh, to complete the quiz. So it's uh, 7.19. Uh, right now, let me just quickly uh, share the quiz. Hopefully I can do it by 7.20. Uh, uh, I can share this for 7.20. Give me a second. All right, 
So, uh, so it's it's a simple quiz, uh, the same type of problems that we have uh, we have been doing, uh, and uh, so I've shared the quiz, and you should uh, send it back to me by seven uh, forty-five. All right. And so, if there are any questions from that from the quiz as well, you can uh, we can discuss them. Uh, and in the next class, we'll then start with magnitude. Right. All right. So, uh, so I've shared the quiz. I'll end the meeting here, and uh, you can uh, share the quiz back with me. Uh, the solved part of it. All right.